Unit 6, Lesson 11, The Distributive Property, Part 3. Number 1. For each expression, use the distributive property to write an equivalent expression. A. 4 times x plus 2. 4 times x is 4x, and bring down the plus sign, and 4 times 2 is 8. So an equivalent expression would be 4x plus 8, or 4 times x plus 8. B. 6 plus 8 times x. x times 6, or 6 times x, is 6x. Bring down the plus sign. And x times 8, or 8 times x, is 8x. So the equivalent expression would be 6x plus 8x. C. 4 times 2x plus 3. 4 times 2x is 8x. Bring down the plus sign and 4 times 3 is 12. The equivalent expression would be 8x plus 12. D. 6 times x plus y plus z. 6 times x is 6x, bring down the plus sign. 6 times y is 6y, bring down the next plus sign. And 6 times z is 6z. An equivalent expression for D would be 6x plus 6y plus 6z. Number 2. Priya rewrites the expression 8y minus 24 as 8 times y minus 3. Han rewrites 8y minus 24 as 2 times 4y minus 12. Are Priya's and Han's expressions each equivalent to 8y minus 24? Explain your reasoning. 8 times y is 8y, and you bring down the subtraction sign, and 8 times 3 is 24. So 8y minus 24 is equivalent to 8 times y minus 3. Yes, so far pre is correct. Now let's compare the expression Han wrote. 2 times 4y minus 12. 2 times 4y equals 8y, bring down the subtraction sign, and 2 times 12 equals 24. 8y minus 24 is equivalent to 2 times 4y minus 12. So yes, I also agree with the expression that Han wrote. They were both correct. Number 3. Select all the expressions that are equivalent to 16x plus 36. A is equivalent to 16x plus 320, so that's not equivalent. B is equivalent to 16x plus 36x, so that's also not equivalent. C is equivalent to 16x plus 36. So yes, 4 times 4x plus 9 is equivalent to 16x plus 36. D is equivalent to 16x plus 36. So yes, 2 times 8x plus 18 is equivalent to 16x plus 36. E is equivalent to 16x plus 72, so no, that expression is not equivalent to 16x plus 36. Number 4. The area of a rectangle is 30 plus 12x. List at least three possibilities for the length and width of the rectangle. We can start with the expression 30 plus 12x, and 30 can be broken down to 3 times 10, bring up the plus sign, and 12x can be broken down to 3 times 4x. Make sure you include the x. Let's make our second equivalent expression. 30 plus 12x can be broken down to 2 times 15 to make 30, bring down the plus sign, and 2 times 6x to equal 12x. Let's make our third equivalent expression. 30 plus 12x can be broken down to half of 60, because half of 60 is 30, bring up the plus sign, and half of 24x, because half of 24x is 12x. Number 5. Select all the expressions that are equivalent to 1 half z, or half of z. A. Z plus z. That equals 2z, so no, that's not equivalent to a half a z. B. Z divided by 2. Well, z divided by 2 is equivalent to half of z, so yes. C z times z. z times z is z to the second power or z squared, so no, that's not equivalent to half of z or one half z. d. 
1 fourth z plus 1 fourth z equals 2 fourth z, or 1 half z. So yes, 1 fourth z plus 1 fourth z is equivalent to 1 half z. E, 2z. 2z is not equivalent to half a z. The expressions that I selected that are equivalent to a half a z, or 1 half z, are b and d. Number 6, a. What is the perimeter of a square with side length 3 centimeters? All sides to a square have the same length, so 3 centimeters times 4 sides would equal 12 centimeters. 7 centimeters. A square with side length 7 centimeters would be 7 centimeters times 4 sides, and that would be 28 centimeters. S centimeters. So a square with side lengths s centimeters would be s times 4, or 4s four centimeters. B. If the perimeter of a square is 360 centimeters, what is its side length? So 360 centimeters divided by 4 sides to a square equals 90 centimeters. Each side length would be 90 centimeters. C. What is the area of a square with side length 3 centimeters? The area of a square is found by multiplying the base times the height. So in this case, we would multiply 3 centimeters by 3 centimeters, and that would equal 9 centimeters squared. 7 centimeters. The area of a square with side length 7 centimeters would be base times height, or 7 centimeters times 7 centimeters, which would equal 49 centimeters squared. And what that means that inside that square that's 7 centimeters by 7 centimeters, you would find 49 squares, and each of those 49 squares would measure 1 centimeter by 1 centimeter. The area of a square with side length s centimeters would be s times s, or s squared, centimeters squared. D. If the area of a square is 121 centimeters squared, what is its side length? To find the area of a square, you need to multiply its base times its height. We have an unknown base and an unknown height, but we do know that a square has side lengths that are all equal. So what number times itself equals 121? That would be 11. 11 times 11 equals 121. So the side length of this square is 11 centimeters. Number 7. Solve each equation. A. 10 equals 4y. That can be rewritten as 4y equals 10. Since I'm solving for y, I need to get the y by itself. So 4y divided by 4 equals 1y, or y. I need to do the same to the other side. 10 divided by 4 equals 2 and 2 fourths, or 2 and a half. y equals 2 and a half, or in decimal form, 2 and 5 tenths. B. 5y equals 17 and 5 tenths. Again, I'm solving for y, so I need to get it by itself. 5y divided by 5 equals 1y. Now I need to do the same to the other side. 17 and 5 tenths divided by 5 equals 3 and 5 tenths. So y equals 3 and 5 tenths. C. 1 and 36 thousandths equals 10y. I rewrote this as 10y equals 1 and 36 thousandths. Since I'm solving for y, I need to get y by itself. So 10y divided by 10 equals y. Now I need to do the same to the other side. 1 and 36 thousandths divided by 10. That's a simple division problem because I'm making it 10 times smaller. So I can just move the decimal point to the left, representing the number getting 10 times smaller. So y equals 1,036 ten thousandths, or 0 0.1036. D. 6 tenths y equals 1 and 8 tenths. 6 tenths y divided by 6 tenths 
equals y, and I did that so I can get the y by itself. Now I need to do the same thing to the other side. 1 and 8 tenths divided by 6 tenths. That's the same as 18 divided by 6. And the trick that I used there is I made the 1 and 8 tenths 10 times bigger and made it 18. But I also have to make the 6 tenths 10 times bigger to make it 6. 18 divided by 6 equals 3, just like 1 and 8 tenths divided by 6 tenths would equal 3. Y equals 3. E. 1 tenth Y equals 15. 1 tenth Y divided by 1 tenth equals Y. I did that so that I could get the Y by itself. Now I need to divide the other side by 1 tenth. 15 divided by 1 tenth is the same thing as 150 divided by 1. I used that same trick. I made 15 10 times bigger to make it 150, and I made 1 tenth 10 times bigger to make it 1. This way I can do the math in my head easily. 150 divided by 1 equals 150. So for this equation, y equals 150. Congratulations, you've completed Unit 6, Lesson 11, The Distributive Property, Part 3.